Hello, Ottawish and Ottawa knees from around the globe. Today's video is centered around the one thing we can all agree is not our fault, but everyone else's. Pollution. This series is going to be a complete front-to-back guide on pollution and its mechanics. In this video, we're going to focus on the causes of pollution and what you need to know in building districts and infrastructure. The next video is going to focus on fighting pollution and its implications on your game. Every single mechanic is going to be explained. I go into detail on how the mechanics are applied, give real game examples, break down the numbers for you in real time. If you're a max minner, this is the perfect video for you. Timestamps are in the description if you want to skip around. But remember to hit subscribe before you do, not to miss any future content. Without any further interruptions, let's get into it. So let's talk about the causes of pollution. Just like in real life, it's only natural to blame one thing for pollution. Yes, districts and infrastructure. Different districts and infrastructure can make your cities incredibly powerful in the late game, but will also cause just a smidge of pollution if you don't keep it under check. This is actually super important for you to know so you can effectively plan. It's critical to choose which districts and infrastructure you want to pick in the right order. So let's take a look at the districts first and then we'll dive into the infrastructure because it's a little bit more convoluted. Train stations cause five pollution per turn. Keep in mind, train stations could actually be useful because if you're in a late game war, units can move between two train stations in adjacent territories for the cost of one movement point. If you place a train station in the right spot, you could move your units across the continent pretty cheaply. They also have half decent bonuses for adjacent makers quarters at plus five production. Well, are you in dire need of prod and plan on warring and moving your units around quickly? They might be good, but we're going to talk about airports that are even better. Next up is aerodromes at 5 pollution per turn. You probably know already that your military air units need aerodromes to work. They can either patrol an area, meaning they'll attack hostile planes and engage in air-to-air -air combat, or they can be sent to attack cities or armies within 14 tiles. Are these guys worth building? Totally situational. Let's talk airports. Airports cost 15 pollution per turn, which is a lot. But while, although they pollute quite a bit, they offer a great deal of benefits. Pretty much threefold. One, aerial trade routes. The safest way to trade items is through the air. Keep an eye out for my upcoming video on a guide to trade. It's going to be a complete front to back thing, so make sure you're subscribed for that one. Second, unit movement. You can move your own units from one airport to another, and it costs just one movement point. That's absolutely crazy. You can move your units across your entire empire. And finally, they offer plus five gold per adjacent market quarters. Although they do pollute quite a bit, it's probably worth building at least a few in your empire just to be safe. Missile silos. Well, 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 once again, we come to nukes. But if you're a culture with an affinity for war, or you're just a gamer who loves nukes, if they tickle your fancy, so to speak, well, you're going to need these, and I won't say much more than that. They cause 15 pollution per turn. Next, let's talk about infrastructure causing pollution. Now, infrastructure is probably the main cause of pollution because more than likely, you've got quite a few makers quarters or farms in your empire. The first one we're going to take a look at is coal plants. These come up pretty early, but they require you to have the forge, a charcoal kin, and the high furnace. It offers two pollution per makers quarters, but gives you plus 10 industry per coal, plus two industry on the maker's quarters themselves, and plus one industry per adjacent maker's quarters. Depending on how many maker's quarters you have, this is not really a bad shout. And if you can keep your pollution amount under control, definitely worth it in my opinion. The next up is the sawmill. The sawmill is the next step up from the lumber yard. It offers plus one pollution per maker's quarters, but gives you plus two industry on tiles producing industry. I'm not of the opinion this is super powerful, but I guess it's more situational. If you don't have a ton of maker's quarters, but you're working a decent amount of tiles with prod, it could be worth it. You just have to make that calculation in your head. Quarrying machinery. This is the step up from stoneworks. It's pretty much the exact same thing, but offers two pollution per maker's quarters instead of one. I love this image. You know, it's like, hey, you know, before you were Egyptians with no shirts on hauling rocks in the bare sun. Well, we're going to jump right into Pippins. No technological advancement has happened whatsoever in between those two points. What the hell is the English word for Pippin? Backhoe. Next up, we have factories. Factories cause plus one pollution on maker's quarters, but offers plus two industry per worker 
as well as plus three worker slots. I honestly don't think this one's a bad one at all. There's some pretty significant bonuses here if you have a lot of people in your city that may not have jobs. I feel like someone's dad that's about to burst into a long-winded joke about Russia in the latter half of the 20th century. Anyways, this one comes in handy if you have already a lot of hamlets around. Uh, there's a lot of upsides and not too many downsides. One level up from factories, we have automated factories. Here we're trading one pollution, plus one industry per worker, and plus three worker slots. This one could be a big boost to your infrastructure later in the game, so definitely worth considering here, but you might have to make the calculations. Anti-air surveillance. Any air battles that happen in a given city will have plus 30 combat strength in your favor, which is yidge. If you don't understand combat strength, feel free to check out my full guide on combat. This guy will cost you plus one pollution on maker's quarters. It might be good if you plan on fighting in friendly territory, but I find that rarely happens for me. Sam is the next level up from anti-air surveillance, and it'll give you plus two pollution to your maker's quarters. Pivoting to the finance aspect of things, financial districts are the level two of banks and offer plus 2% money per oil. It also adds plus 15% money for that city, which is also pretty good. There's a bit of a catch to this though. To build financial districts, your city needs to have three market quarters. For this one, you're looking at plus two pollution per maker's quarters. I'd recommend prioritizing this building in cities where you have a high gold production and maker's quarters are at a minimum, but that's just my opinion. The Techno Park. Everyone loves a good Techno Park, and it'll give you plus two pollution to your maker's quarters. These are always just adjacent to the seedy underbelly of any city. Driving into a Techno Park, you always go by Empty Warehouse, Empty Warehouse, Strange Tim Hortons, Wendy's slash type restaurant, Strip Club, another Empty Warehouse, another Tim Hortons, and then the Techno Park. You get plus two science per researcher, plus three researcher slots, and here's the kicker, plus one science per researcher per aluminum. If you have any aluminum or any sense to trade with somebody, this is actually a great pickup. Next we have the supercomputer lab. The supercomputer lab is essentially the evil folks at IBM. Pushing buttons and cranking knobs and slowly eating away at people's souls to make science come out. Building this infrastructure will give you plus 30% science on your city. Honestly, that's pretty big. I'd say it's almost a surefire thing you need to build. However, it'll cost you two pollution on each of your maker's quarters. If you have any cities with a higher number of scientific buildings than maker's quarters and you're trying to avoid pollution, that's where I would put it. Next up, we have command compounds. This is in the district defense family also. It follows watchtowers and forts. If you have three garrisons in a city, you can grab this for the low, low price of two pollution per maker's quarters. It'll give you plus one combat strength when you're adjacent to a garrison and plus one vision from garrisons. Honestly, I would never build this. Now we move on to pollution coming from farms. We start with a farming factory. Oh, those dirty, dirty cows. Nothing like beautiful sheep. Sheep would never pollute the environment. Look at the beautiful creatures. Oh, my days grazing in all their glory. Look how majestic. So factory farming offers you plus two farmer slots and two food on your farmer's quarters, plus an additional two food per adjacent farmer's quarters. However, it'll cost you two pollution. I guess this one's kind of situational. It would depend on how many farmer's quarters you had and how desperate you were for food. In my opinion, this infrastructure is not really worth it unless you're playing very, very tall. Next, we come to industrial silos. So silos are the next steps up from grain silos. This will give you plus two food from your farmer's quarters and plus one farmer slots. It will also increase your pollution by one per farmer's quarters. So that about wraps up the first part of this video series. If you liked it and enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe for some similar content. And I have some great news for you. There's a part two to this video. I've linked it up on screen now. It covers fighting pollution, the calculations and how the mechanic actually works as well as the implications and end game. I'm still a super small channel, so even a simple like or a subscription is a huge help. And if you leave a comment, I'll reply to each and every one.